about GCSE unit P8, which is heating. Um, so the first thing you need to know for this unit is the differences between good conductors of heat and bad conductors. So um, metals are generally considered good conductors of heat, and this is because they have a sea of delocalized electrons, which allows them to transfer heat more efficiently from one location to another. Uh, yeah, this is shown in the diagram below, and the little purple dots are the electrons, and as you can see, they're free to move around. Solids are also um, considered to be better conductors of heat, and this is because their particles are closer together, again, allowing um, the heat to be transferred from particle to particle easy, uh, more easily. Um, yeah. And then bad conductors of heat include plastic, wood, and glass, and this is mainly because they don't have the property of having delocalized electrons. Um, liquids and gases are also poor conductors since their particles are further away from each other, as shown by the diagrams. So there are three main methods of heat transfer, um, but first, what is heat transfer? Heat transfer is the flow of heat due to temperature differences and it generally flows from higher to lower temperatures. So there's um, three methods. The first one is conduction, and this is when heat is transmitted through collisions between neighboring particles, and generally happens in all three states of matter. And conduction can be prevented through the use of insulators or vacuum, for example, like a thermos flask prevents heat from escaping. The second method is convection, so this is when heat is transferred due to varying densities of a fluid, and by fluid um, we mean liquids or gases, which is where it occurs, and conve convection can be prevented by a vacuum. Um, so this is a simple diagram of a convection current, and basically here the hot radiator heats up the particles, and warm air tends to expand, and this reduces their density, allowing the air to rise up, and once it's risen up, it starts to sink after cooling down, and it gets denser and starts to sink, and that causes this cycle to occur. And this is just one example of it um, happening. Um, so the third and final main method of heat transfer is radiation, and it um, occurs through infrared va waves. And um, what's different about radiation it does it is that it does not require a medium to travel through. So, you know, radiation can happen in space, and this is actually how the sun transfers heat to us um, through UV radiation. And it can be prevented by shiny or light-colored surfaces, and this is because um, these types of surfaces tend to reflect heat, whilst um, dark or matte surfaces absorb heat. Uh, so, the last part of this unit, I think, is thermocouples, which are devices which measure the difference between two junctions. Um, so, this is, again, a simplified diagram of how a thermocouple would work. But basically, you have two junctions, one hot and one cold, and a multimeter in the middle, which um, would measure the voltage. And the greater the the difference between the hot and cold junction, the larger the voltage produced, and this allows you to measure yeah, the difference in temperature between the two. Um, so some advantages of using a thermocouple, number one, um, they can measure a very large range of temperatures, so they can go up to very, very high temperatures. Number two is they can display changes very rapidly because it's like a digital scale. And number three, they can be used in dangerous environments. And the materials which thermocouples are normally made out of are um, nickel and chromium, and this is just mainly restricted by the melting point of the metal used.